Hello folks and welcome. Zorin OS 16.3 GNOME Desktop. So today I'm going to talk about something that is becoming common with uh, family members. I'll give you a hypothetical. We have a family of six that uh, maybe have multiple computers, but they only have one shared portable hard drive that they're either backing up their files to or sharing files. So I'm going to be talking about some tools that you can do that with. Um, we can use archive tools, compression tools, and also compression with passwords. So this is the standard version of the Zorin OS desktop GNOME. I'm not sure if some of these tools are contained in the pro version because I haven't test drove that. But in either case, I will uh, talk about some tools that uh, are possibly not available in your file manager called Files or Nautilus. We can certainly go and install a couple of different tools. So in either case, uh, this is mostly about file sharing and uh, archiving files and compressing files and compressing them with a little privacy if you're trying to keep some files, well, out of people's eyeballs. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so anyways, I am filming in 1920 by 1080. I can certainly film in 4K. You can see that. But I thought I'd spare you the smaller icons. But uh, you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. You are watching this on Linux for Seniors. This is just a watermark. It's grayed out. It's not really sharp. You should see that logo down here a little bit sharper and darker that you can click on if you want to subscribe to Linux for Seniors. And I highly encourage that you do that. That way you can watch this video in multiple sessions at your leisure, at your time. So you can walk through the whole process. And I do recommend that you watch the video in its entirety. What do I have on my YouTube site? Over 270 videos and growing on all kinds of tips and tricks. Linux is for any age. I make mention of that in my About section. But the name of the channel is Linux for Seniors. You should see this icon here. If you don't, then go find me on YouTube. You're watching this on someone else's channel. So I have a couple of things to talk about. Some tools that are not available in my file manager. So if you're brand new to Zorin, special welcome to you. We can certainly find different packages or software and add them together to make things work. Little bits and pieces, as one would say. So I'm looking for an archive tool that has only tar on it. I'll, I'll explain what tar is in a little bit. And then some uh, tools that will not only allow me to compress, but also do passwords. So that's not currently available in my standard version of Nautilus, the file manager for this distribution. Again, I don't know what the pro version has. But I can certainly look for bits and pieces, but I thought I'd just do a complete file manager. Now, I have one in mind, and uh, we can certainly install different file managers, but I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to type in Nemo, as in Captain Nemo, or Nemo the cartoon. And it comes up with uh, two hits, Files and Nextcloud. And you're going, how did I get Nemo out of this? Well, that's because Nemo is the official file manager for the Cinnamon desktop. I'm only after a couple of tools in there, but I'm going to install it anyways to use those tools. So Nemo, the file manager, again, is made for the Cinnamon desktop, is not 100% compatible with Zorin OS, GNOME desktop, but it is 95% compatible. And some of the tools I'm going to be using today are fully compatible. And those will be the archive tools and compression tools and also with password protection. So files is what it's called. You only have the Zorin package format and you can install that. And you can install the add-on if you like. So I have them sitting here. They're both named the same though, different icons. I'm gonna remove that because under general conditions, when you install it, you're gonna be looking for it. So you can type in Nemo and you'll find it immediately. It's right here. You can also use the search criteria files. And it comes up with three hits on my system, text editor and two that are called files. The dark gray one here is your Nautilus file manager. This one is Nemo. I'm going to right click and add to favorites, which puts it on the panel or taskbar. And then we're gonna open up these two separately. So this one here, Hamburger Menu Time, is called Files. 
and this one here is called Nemo. So this one has a couple of advantages and uh, more importantly I'm going to open this up. I'm not trying to overwhelm you that's why I recommend that you watch these videos at your leisure and don't skip over things. A lot of people are always in a hurry even though I have timelines people inevitably will ask me a question that is already in the video. Hamburger menu files. This is also known as Nautilus. I'm going to click the website link so you can see the name. So this file manager is a decent file manager. It contains lots of tools but it is different from Nemo nonetheless. I'll talk about the first thing. It's very common. You want to resize icons. You can go to 50 percent. When you do that all of the icons in every single category are also 50 percent. If I decide to go the other way and increase that to 133 percent then these icons are 133 and so are these. In the other file manager you can resize them independently. So that's one difference. So I'm going to also make mention of the fact that I'm using a tower computer with a fairly standard keyboard and computer mouse. Holding down the control key and scrolling back and forth will resize icons also. I do this uh, quite often when I say this because I never know when there's a new user watching this. I'll resize that to a comfortable size. Hopefully that's comfortable for you. Again, filming in 1920 by 1080. So I created a backup folder. You know, right click, create new, shift, control, end. You can certainly install different backup programs, but today we're going to be talking about putting backups on a shared hard drive between six users. And also maybe you're sharing files or backups. Either one, you can use that. And more importantly, you can also put shared information here that uh, could have password protections so the other users can't see those files. Hopefully that made sense. And I'll walk you through the whole thing. I'll walk you through the whole thing. So I created a folder. It's nothing in there. So I'm going to use Control and A. That selects everything. Everything on the screen, not the hidden stuff. I'm not really going to focus on hidden folders. Right click on any one of these and do Compress. So this tool has, is very limited. It's got dot .zip if you can't read that. Again, filming in 1920 by 1080. Adjust your YouTube player. Dot .zip dot tar dot x z and then dot 7z. Those are the only selections here. I don't know what the pro version has, if it's any different. So um, this one is interesting, the one in the middle. The uh, tar stands for tape archive. It's been around since the Unix days. I've been around computers for 40 years. Been around Linux ever since it came out 25 plus years ago, maybe even 30. Maybe I need to update my about. But in either case, let's move on. So uh, the zip is also available in the other file manager, but that one also has passwords. And so is the 7z in the other file manager. This one does not. So I'm just going to type in number one because I just wanted to let you see the starting of this process and how long this would roughly take. So what am I using for a hard drive? My primary hard drive is a solid state drive, regular solid state drive. I do have also an NVMe, but it's a backup drive that's not listed currently. It's in the other locations. And that is a USB connected hard drive. I'll talk about him in a minute. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to start the process. And once the cycle starts, I'm going to click on it and then more likely terminate it because it's going to take several minutes to do this. Okay. Right now it's creating that. And you can see the progression bar is very slow. So I'm going to terminate that and not bore you to death. All right. So first of all, I'll re-mention this. You can resize icons this way. You can do the control plus plus, control negative. But anytime you resize icon here in Nautilus, it resizes all of them. So if I make this doing it the, the, this way, 50%, then these are 50%. If I do this to 100% or 133 in this case, then these are bigger and these are bigger. However, I am going to close this file manager and now talk about this one. So Nemo has a couple of tools to offer you. Again, I, I would say about a 95% compatibility with Zorin OS. There's a couple of things in here. 
but the tools I'm going to talk about today should be 100% compatible. I'm going to get rid of that partial file. These are the same folders as in the other file manager, obviously. The only difference is this one says the name of the user and you can toggle this back and forth. So I'm going to close this and reopen the, the other one just for a second. This just says home on it. Okay, so that's by default. All right, I'm going to do a control A, which selects everything just like I did before and right click on any one of these and do a compress. Then I'm going to pull this box in the air and let you see all the selections. It has the 7Z and the zip as just like in the Nautilus and also has the tar.xz, but it has also a lot of different tar and a lot of different file formats. I'm going to pick the, uh, pick the plain tar. What is tar again? Tape archive. Again, I've been, been around computers for 40 years and tar has been used all, for a long time. Tar has been used for a very long time. Uh, but in either case, um, you know, we, times have changed and, you know, people do things differently here and there. Uh, tools change, they've updated, and whatever. So TAR is not a compressed format in its plain wrapper. The other TARs are compressed. You, you saw the TAR.xz, how slow it was, because it was trying to compress. All right, let's talk about naming convention. So file name. You can certainly use whatever the file name is, but I would recommend that you use the date also. So today's date is November 30th. If you're in Europe, maybe it would be uh, 3011, 23, or we can just use 11, 30, 23, or whatever format you want. My recommendation is to do this because of um, it'll take me, so that's one gigabyte. I couldn't finish my sentence. But what I'm getting at is uh, if you put dates on these things, at least you know how old the files are because you can do as many tar files as you want. I'm going to throw that in my backup folder and open it there. Now you can see the icon is bigger. So let's talk about Nemo again. Making these big, making these small and switch between the two. It holds the settings. Dinky to large. Okay, and I'll resize these on the fly. There's also a tool down here for that. View menu, you have the standard zoom in and out. Hold down the control key, plus, 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 minus, 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 and control zero. All right, so I'll make this to a reasonable size. So we made a one gigabyte tar backup. All right, I have been around computers for 40 years and uh, inevitably I do delete a file or two once in a while. I'm sure that's never happened to anyone. So I have some pictures and I'm going to use one of them as a guinea pig. Well, use uh, one JPEG. So maybe one JPEG is a picture of your dear friend, your grandkid, your um, children, uh, friend, pet, uh, maybe even a file or folder. But you clicked on it for whatever reason and you were playing with your file manager and you inadvertently hit that del wonderful delete key and you don't notice it's gone. So uh, later on in the, day, in the day, you're in here, you don't notice one JPEG sitting here and you want to clean up your trash can. So you do that. A couple of three days later, you are looking for that picture of your dear friend or that important picture, one JPEG. It's missing. You immediately panic and head for the trash. And then now you see the trash has been emptied. It's blank. Well, luckily enough, you made a backup using tar. There are lots of backup tools, but I'm just using the file manager today as this example. So that is a tar ball or tar box. Most people call this tar balls, but anyways, I call it a tar box. What's in the box? What's in the box is very organized files. And uh, in my pictures box, I have my one JPEG that I can pull out and drop to recover my one JPEG and cut it and throw it into my pictures folder to recover from this boo-boo, this nice, wonderful accident that I had earlier. This again could be a folder or it could be a file. It happens to be a JPEG. 
let me talk about this device. This is a 240 gigabyte hard drive. It's connected to the rear of my tower computer, not the front. Why did I connect this USB hard drive to the back of the computer? Because it uh, will transfer data faster. Most of the time on a tower computer, the ports in the back work faster than the ones in the front. I wouldn't say it's always the case, but it is in mine. This is a solid state drive, 240, not a spinning. It's sitting in an enclosure that I got for, I think, 12 bucks on Amazon with a USB 3 cable. I'm going to transfer one gigabyte to that drive. Copy. And before I hit paste and you head out the door for coffee, I'm going to uh, encourage that not only for you to subscribe and watch this in multiple sessions, but hang on. This will only take three seconds. It's three quarters done. It's finished. One gigabyte worth of data in a TAR format. TAR is not compressed. Okay. I can take this onto another computer. This computer is uh, be, this drive is being shared by six users, just hypothetical, family members, and um, they're all doing their own thing. You can either create subfolders in here with their names on it, or you can dump the files all in one little reservoir. I like tar because it's nice and organized. You can also say the same thing with compressed files. So let's talk about those. I'm going to first make a tar out of these five items. What's in here? A bunch of other compressed files. A bunch of icons. Hopefully you've seen my new video on GIMP, how to make icons and resize images. That's another video for itself. It's on a different distribution, but GIMP is GIMP. I have GIMP installed on this. And it's right here. GNU Image Manipulation Program. You can create icons, you can edit images and photographs and etc. Now, I am going to take these five objects and select them all by dragging a box. You can also use Control A, however you select all. Right click, compress. So, we have all of these options. The first one I'm going to use is plain old tar. Tape archive. I'll leave the name alone. It does this immediately because again it doesn't have to compress. It just takes these files, throws them in a box, makes a copy of them in other words. So I'm going to right click and cut them. Throw it on the stick. Throw it on the USB drive, the shared drive. How big is this? Well, let's find out. So here's downloads, five items, right? I'm going to right click and hit properties. So that's 68.2 megabytes. How big is it on the drive? 68.3. So it's 0.1 bigger than the original folder. So it did not compress. It actually grew a little bit. I would, I would say that's not even worth talking about. 68, 68. 68, 2, 68, 3. But more importantly, it did not compress it. That's my whole point. Straight tar. Again, not available in your standard file manager. Now, let's do the same set and we'll use the same compression. You remember there was dot seven Z and zip. So let's do the five using those. And uh, I will select seven Z. Seven Z also offers me password. I'll talk about those in a minute. We'll call this one downloads two and compress. Takes longer because it's crunching them. It all depends on the hardware of your machine and how many files and folders you selected also. Right click, cut, and paste. I'll do another set. And uh, uh, we used 7Z on the last pass, so we will go with zip on the next one. Zip also has password, but I'm going to talk about that later. We'll call that th download three and create. And then I'll compare the three. So what would be the purpose of compressing this downloads folder, for instance? Well, um, maybe you're running out of drive space. Maybe you're only allocated between your six family members, only a certain amount of space on that drive. 
That's some of the reasons. 68, 49, 50, size-wise. Not compressed is a tar. 7-zip is compressed. Zip is compressed. This one wins for being the smallest file. They all contain the same amount of files for the download folder directory. This one, again, is my one gigabyte drive. So I'm going to get rid of that so that doesn't confuse you. Okay, because I still have a copy of it sitting right here. So let's go back in here. Now let's talk a little bit about um, privacy. So again, we're sharing this drive with six family members. Some of those family members may be operating Microsoft computers, maybe some Macs and Linux. How would you format that drive? Well, if you format that with extension 4, guess what happens to the Microsoft users? They can't use that drive. So a common file format that you actually may want to think about when you are using a format tool is File Allocation Table 32, FAT32. That's what this is formatted with. So that allows me to view the content of this drive on not only Linux, but Microsoft Windows and Macs. So far, so good? All right. Let's talk about a little bit of privacy. Maybe you're sharing this drive and everybody has access to it and uh, they, you have your own personal folder or personal you know, a tar file or whatever it might be. Um, let's talk a little bit about privacy. So we're going to do a compression with privacy with these five objects. I'm going to select all of them, right click, compress. I'll use 7z for the first pass. Now 7z allows me passwords, so does zip and so does war. Dot war is what that stands for. I'm going to use 7z. I'm going to change that name to an X to give it a little bit of privacy. I'm going to use other options. Type in a password that's not easily guessable, but at least something that you know what it is. Now, there is a selection down here where this says encrypt the file list to. This is not industrial encryption, but this is plenty good for home use. Plenty good for home use. You can turn that on and off. The reason I'm going to turn that on is because I have five objects. I have two folders and three files. So it's going to have a file list. I can also split this into different volumes of X amount of megabytes if I do the plus thing. Okay, I'm just going to use these two items. So I'm going to create a X.7Z. What this will allow me to do is put that file on that shared hard drive where nobody else can see what's in, the f in this box. I'm going to cut it and throw it here. It could be in a subfolder also, or it could be on my internally hard drive or, um, I'm sorry, secondary hard drive or internal hard drive. However you want to look at this. I'm just putting it on the stick or USB drive. But this USB drive is being shared by family members. So they're going to try to open this, and this is what they see. They hit cancel and they see nothing. What's in the box? What's in that X.7Z? We don't know. It's 49 megabytes worth of stuff. So we're going to try to guess at the password, right? Put in different things. We get an error. We still see nothing. So you don't know what's in the mystery box. Well, for you to see that, you have to put the right password. Now you can view the file list. You can extract all of them or just individual objects. So I'm just going to do the uh, PDF and uh, maybe the cabbage text or maybe the photograph too. And I could have extracted all of them, but I'm not. PDF, it's just a user manual for a printer. You know, it's got multiple pages of stuff. Close, text file, close, and a JPEG. Delete, delete, delete. No matter how many times you open this thing, it's always going to ask for a password. As long as you are giving it the correct password and it's open, you can extract all of them or some of them. As soon as you close that box, it'll request a password. So that's a good one to have for privacy if you're sharing the same drive. Here's another way. Same objects, compress. We're going to go the opposite direction. Let me pull this up. And we're going to go with zip. 
Um, War also offers the same. You can also put password on this one. You can see that I'm, if you can enter the field, normally that's how it works. But I am going to change that to zip, a very common file format, even found on Microsoft Windows and Macs. Now, I'm going to let you see that's a dash. That is not clickable. I'm clicking on it. You can hear my mouse. I can't click this either. So these are grayed out and not used for zip. Only the password is allowed or not, no password. All right, I could use um, like ZZ for a name. ZZ Zip. Sounds like a band. Anyways, <laughs> right click, cut, and uh, toss that on the drive. So again, somebody grabs a hold of this drive that's part of your family because they're allowed to use this drive on all of their computers and it's formatted with FAT32 and they try to look at ZZ Zip and they say, oh, cool, I can see John's files or Mary's files or whatever. I'm going to try to pull them on my drive. Let's see. Ooh, password. Well, I don't know what the password is. I hit cancel. Let's do that again. All right, I'm just going to make up a password. Let's see. Yay, it looks like I get, oh, what's this error? Wait a minute. I got a thumbnail. How about the next file? Yay, I can see it. Oh, okay, I got an error. Hmm. How about the JPEG? Uh, yay, I got a thumbnail. It must work. I got an error. Why is that? Let's go take a look at these files. Zero bytes, zero bytes, zero bytes. That'll give you a clue there's something wrong. There's no image here. If I right click and do properties and try to do image properties, it's failed. I open up the text file, it's blank. Line one, and that's all you see. And then the PDF looks like that. All right, that's all bad stuff. All right, now you as the user pull this on your machine or your drive or whatever other machine you got this on and you give it the correct password when you pull that out. I'll just let you see that from here. It has bits and bytes. I'll do the cabbage thing and the JPEG. You can clearly see I got data in here on all of this stuff. And more importantly, I also have digital information on this photograph. It was taken with an iPhone 10 Apple and all the particulars. So all I'm trying to uh, convey to you is the tools that if you are wanting to do a straight tar, dump it on your local drive as a backup or put it on a USB drive or a stick. You can certainly do it in a tar format or compressed formats and compressed formats with passwords if you're sharing this on your system. I can certainly take this one gigabyte file and add the rest of this with it to let you see the enormity of this. Control A. How long do you think it'll take to make a file out of this? This will be roughly two gigabytes when I get done. I'll just uh, do triple A on the user here. It's creating that. That was less than five seconds. Two gigabytes. How long do you think it'll take me to copy this onto a USB hard drive? Well, inherently USB 2s and 3s are very slow. So are spinning hard drives. USB sticks are also slower than USB hard drives. That's what this is. It's a USB solid state drive. I'm going to start counting as soon as I hit paste. 10-1, 10-2, 10-3, 10-4, 10-5, 10-6, 10-7, 10, 5, 10, 6, it's roughly 7 seconds for 2 gigabytes to get transferred from my local drive into that USB backup drive. Okay, not bad for performance. It's also got a backup of the backup. So that's why that's 2.2 gigabytes. The other one was 1 gig. The primary backup was 1. All right. So basically, you can also create your own users if you're sharing your computer, and you can do that through settings. Thank you for watching.